Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Geekdom 101 Q&A. And today I'm answering your questions once again. No, seriously. Bonus edition of Geekdom Q&A. I did promise you to get an extra one this week due to the fact that the last one was so short. So you combine the time from the last one into this one. You got two big ass Q&As back to back. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to these questions. And of course, Geekdom 101 Ask.fm slash Geekdom101 is where you go to ask your questions. Jacob Jackson starts things off. What do you think of my Boo? Let me close out of this. What do you think of my Boo Goku power chart? This is by raw strength and doesn't account for techniques or abilities. SSJ3 Goku 12, Kid Boo 11. Well, already I think that Kid Boo is stronger than SSJ3 Goku. Um, if you have a disagreement with that, go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me why. Uh, I just felt that with or without techniques, Kid Buu is just way too durable. Um, and he's just too much stamina and just too strong. And Goku's SSJ3 power burns out. So already I kind of disagree with your list, but let's keep going here. 11 Fat Buu, 10 Evil Buu. Evil Buu is stronger than Fat Buu slightly. Um, good Buu, I suppose, is... I guess that's Fat Boo after the split. Yeah, that kind of makes sense being there. Majin Vegeta, yep, I agree. Um, SSJ4, that's just one. Okay. A little bit of a weird list. You're missing any. You're missing the fused characters like Gotenks. Also, you don't have Gohan on here. And I don't know if you consider the ultimate upgrade from Old Kai an ability or technique, but it certainly is a power-up. So, if anything, he should be at the top of this list, maybe even above SSJ3 Goku. So, I don't really agree with the list. You're right about, you're somewhat right about the order of the boos. Um, even though Evil Boo is more powerful than Fat Boo, I think that still that Kid Boo is ahead of Goku. And of course, I think Boo Han is ahead of Kid Boo. But that's also up for debate because some people do think that Kid Boo is more powerful than Boo Han. Um, it just seems like that's not the case based on the, the, the manga and you know, basically the manga. The manga tells more. So. That's kind of my thoughts on that. GT Piccolo versus Martian Manhunter. Um, definitely going to go with Martian Manhunter on this one. Piccolo and GT is pretty much nothing. He's a non-factor. Doesn't really do jack shit in the whole series, to be honest. And Martian Manhunter is uh, has invisibility, phasing, shape-shifting. The guy's just an animal. Martian Manhunter wins. Terminator versus Cyborg Tao. Um, I'm going to go with Cyborg Tao because he knows the Dodonpa technique. This is one of those cases where non-Dragon Ball characters, are, it's very hard to compete with the power of Dragon Ball characters from the outside. That being said, though, of course, if you have Marvel or DC, then that could be a, you know, it could be a different story. S Leo Carroll, right. So any idea how a Zenkai boost works on fused characters like Gotenks? Do they get a boost when they revert or not at all? Maybe only half the boost. This bugs me because I have no idea. I have no idea either because we have never seen a example of a fused character getting a Zenkai boost. I'm going to assume, again, this is just an assumption. It's headcanon. It's not anything that I've read in any guidebook. I'm going to assume that a fused character does not get a Zenkai boost and that once a character defuses, once Gotenks becomes Goten and Trunks once again, that they do not, that they don't keep any power-ups. Does that make sense? Because if that was the case, they'd both be, both be able to do SSJ3 or at least two and they can't. So just based upon just my mental logic, I just don't think that... You know, fused characters get Zenkai boosts at all. I think it's just a, a technique, a fusion. Now, there is an exception. If Vegito were to remain fused, because Vegito is composed of 100% Saiyajin biology, let's say Vegito stayed as one character for the remainder of life or whatever. I do believe Vegito can get Zenkai boosts. However, I don't think it can happen on Finger Fusion. Let me go ahead and move on to the next one here. First of all, I'm going to get a quick sip of tea for the working man out there. Paying them gimmicks in the mail called bills. Hey, man. Have you heard of this YouTuber, Canis Latrans? He's awesome. My favorite YouTuber. Would you please collab with him? Thanks. Well, let's take a look because no, I have it. 
I don't know who this guy is. So, no, I have not heard of him. Uh, I don't know him. I have to watch his videos. Um, he would have to hit me up. We'll see. He kind of needs to work on his um, his titles, though. Like, these are decent titles, but you want to put a little bit more information in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you want to make as big your titles as complex as possible and as real as possible in order to... Um, get more search results, and this is misspelled right here. So I mean, we'll we'll see. I don't really know this guy. It's one of those things where you know he's he's definitely got to do some research on how to get over on YouTube, but uh, we'll see. I'll take a look later on. I can't do it right now. Ronald McDonald. I don't know. Drugs are bad. Since Dragon Ball is such a popular series, do you think GT's timeline could ever potentially be written off? It already has been written off, but remember, everybody has their own fucking canon, so it doesn't matter. If you don't think it's written off, then it's not written off, but I assure you, if you say it on the internet, you're going to have about a thousand people say that you're wrong because GT's not canon, but Battle of Gods is canon because the mighty Toriyama said it. But wait, no! Battle of Gods is not canon anymore because Super's overriding Battle of Gods. But wait! Gregory's in Super, so what does that mean? Stop fighting over the fucking canon. So, I'll restructure the question for the answer that I think you're looking for. I don't think GT will be forgotten about ever, because no matter what, no matter if it, Toriyama was involved or not, it exists. And that's it. It exists. <laughs> Yo, how's it going, man? Glad you could answer my previous question. Next one. What do you think would happen if Ginyu used the body change technique on a dance fusion character like Gotenks? What happens after the split? Keep it up. I think I got this question before, and the answer is I don't know. I do not know what happens if they split. Perhaps Ginyu's spirit somehow splits in the two bodies. That is a great question, and it is a mind fuck, no matter what. But there is no answer. Whoops, I made it anonymous in the Ginyu Gotenks question next. What is... That's that guy. What is the worst dub you've heard? You made it anonymous here too, bro. Have you heard this trash? Let's see here. Uh, that's a Spaniard dub, by the way. I could tell just seconds from listening to it. I have heard it. And actually, it's not a great dub. There are two... There's actually several versions of Spanish. I don't know if you guys knew that. And the as far as Dragon Ball Z dubs go, Dragon Ball dubs, there is the Mexican American, Latin American version, and then there's the Spaniard version. I think it's called Catalian or some shit like that. Well, the Catalian version's a different kind of Spanish, and it's not really very good, especially when compared to the Latin American version. Latin American version is ten times better. Um, so yeah, it's not that great. It's not that great. I like how he says, "Listen to it later if you're in the middle of a video." Well, I am, buddy. So there you go. But I still checked it out. Have you seen the ending for DB Super? How about the ending, like, animation? At the end, when the cast is joining Goku at the sunset, when 18 and Krillin, is, I think it's him, join, the height difference is to be too big, isn't it? I mean, Krillin is short, but he looks shorter than Kid Trunks. Am I missing something? Aaron or Ronda? He does look a bit smaller. Same thing with Goten, maybe because Trunks is getting taller, or maybe because the people who are animating this thing are having problems putting things up to scale. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole Episode 5 fiasco here again, but there are definitely what appears to be some problems with putting things to scale in this series. Same thing with, like, Pilaf as well. I don't really know if it's going to continue like this. Hopefully not. So I don't think you're going crazy, bro. I think there's a possibility that, yeah, it's just that Trunks is getting older or that they're having tr trouble putting things to scale. Do you think if there was a villain strong enough that Gogeta could go SSJ through just like Gotenks? Both Vegeta and Goku can go once I once like Goten Trunks. Corey Wilson. Absolutely. You have to understand something. You have to really understand. The power of fusion is very, very underrated by a lot of fans. And it's also very overrated by a lot of fans. But the reality is that when two characters fuse, the fused body is able to, uh, to basically handle a tremendous larger amount of abuse than a regular body can and the power up that you get from fusion is a lot more than just a multiplier I mean it's just it's hard to even fathom that Goten and Trunks's power multiplied could somehow beat Super Boo but yet Gotenks can do it no Gotenks is significantly stronger than Goten and Trunks combined so if Gotenks, who are two inexperienced kids, are able to unlock SSJ3, why would Gogeta not be able to? I mean, if anything, Gogeta would know how to do it at the drop of a hat. 
So, yeah. Gogeta can definitely go SSJ3. <laughs> Could you please explain this picture from V-Jump in 2004? I honestly can't describe it, but these Broly and Gogeta power levels are seem off i'm sorry there's a link i know that screws with the q a uh, not necessarily let's take a look okay i nah that's just some bullshit numbers bro i wouldn't buy any of that as being official yeah this is this is back from when dragon ball z3 which is budokai 3 was coming out um and if you guys remember, one of the big problems is that on the opening video animation for Budokai 3, they show Gogeta and Broly fighting, and Go Broly actually gets a hit on him, and it's such bullshit. Like, it literally pisses me off. Even though I love the Budokai 3 opening, Broly does not stand a chance whatsoever against Gogeta, not even close. But yeah, Broly fans will sit there and defend it and say, oh, well, in the Budokai 3 opening, uh, he he was able to, to hit... He was able to hit... Uh, to, to take Gogeta. No, fuck you, bro. It's just a fucking cartoon. That's not fucking... It's just an intro. It has nothing at all to do... Nothing at all to do... With the actual power level. So just ignore that. It sounds like propaganda bullshit. Bojack versus Hulk. Hulk. Actually, the real answer is Bojack. I know last video I said Broly. Broly could probably kick Hulk's ass too, alright? I was just trying to fuck with Broly people, alright? Yeah, Bojack wins. Iron Man versus King Vegeta. Iron Man's gonna win this one, bro. Too much technology, and King Vegeta's never shown any kind of power that's impressing me at all. I mean, I know there was that one flashback on Namek when Vegeta was thinking about his father, I think, and then, like, and then like he does some move where he blows up a bunch of people. I just don't think that's enough for I think Iron Man takes it. King Vegeta, I've never been impressed with his power. Trent, do you... I think you should discuss which fusion technique gives the highest boost when used. I did in a previous Q&A. There is another Q&A where I talked about this. We know these techniques are not just additions, so which one between the Mechie and Dancer Potara gives the biggest boost to the two power levels? It'd be a great topic since an army can be made for each. Well, if you watch the manga... I just can't... I, that sounded okay. Hey, let me do that over again. Well, if you read the manga and watch the anime... You can tell that even though you might be able to make an argument for for a few, for Namekian versus Dance, Potara is significantly stronger. There's just no way to deny it. It's just too much of a power boost. Vegito is so much more powerful than Gotenks. Vegito SSJ one was would kick Gotenks SSJ 3s ass. Think about that one. You know. Damn, this tea is good. Hey Geekdom, I have a question for you. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Each wife had seven sacks. Each sack had seven cats. <laughs> Each cat had seven kits. Kits, cats, sacks, and wives. How many were going to St. Ives? My number is 555 and the answer. So call me maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, 530,000. Do you think that Kenshiro from the Fist of the North Star can beat Goku? I think if Kenshiro punched Goku, it would be game over for Goku. I have not watched Fist of the North Star in fucking almost 20 years. I don't remember. Just sorry, I just do not remember. How much pussy do you get a week? Well, first of all, you used the wrong spelling for week. It's W-E-E-K, and let's just say that I get enough. Who has the biggest set of dildos in Dragon Ball? I think it's Chi-Chi. I've already answered this one. Favorite porn star list, I've already answered that one. Uh, what's the best way to watch DBZ? There's so many different versions. 16x9, 4x3, remaster, Falconer soundtrack, original Japan, dub, sub. It seems that like Dragon Box is really good, but it's extremely expensive. That is completely subjective because most fans from the pre tsunami era will tell you that the best way to watch is original Japanese 4x3. And that is the way it was meant to be watched. I mean, the, that's what I'm going to tell you. Original Japanese 4x3 is the way Dragon Ball is meant to be watched. Now, some people love the Bruce Falconer score. And if so, then you got to watch the 16x9 Falconer version. Um, you can also watch it in 16x9 with the Kikuchi score in Japanese or in English in 16x9. I actually don't think that's a good idea versus 4x3. Even though 16x9 does look better on big widescreen TVs because it is 16 by 9 uh, as far as fitting the screen goes the quality is greatly diminished not to mention that the top and bottom of the image are chopped off 16 by 9 is not the way that Dragon Ball was meant to be watched the movies is something else but the Dragon Ball TV episodes are meant to be watching 4 by 3 
Um, as far as remaster goes, please do not, do not buy into that because, I, okay, whenever somebody in the community mentions I was watching Dragon Ball Z remastered, that is a liar, liar, pants on fire situation because, I'm going to tell you why, the word remastered was used in promoting the orange bricks. The orange bricks were not remastered. That was a big, big, bold face lie. And if you go back and you check out some old Konzenshu podcasts from back in those days, which I don't really remember which one off the top of my head, this was talked about at, at nauseum. The orange bricks suck not only because of the aspect ratio and because of the bad quality, but because they claim, well, that's part of what I'm about to say, because they claim that they're remastered high definition, but guess what? You can't put a high definition image on a DVD. It's not possible. You know, not in DVD quality. DVDs are MPEG-4s, not Blu-ray VLCs or VLDs or whatever. It's not possible. So, that word remastered has been just, it's just been a problem in the community that, that maybe one day I'll hope to get rid of. But, it's really up to you. The best way for me is Japanese with subtitles 4x3 on the Dragon Boxes. If you can't do it that way, you can always try to watch it on Hulu. Um, or if you have to watch the Orange Bricks, the quality is not that great, you can do that. Or I would get the Blu-rays. Even though the Blu-rays are the second, maybe third best way to watch the show, it really is kind of all that's left right now. So just get the Blu-rays. The um, That's the best thing I can tell you. Because you're right, the Dragon Boxes are way too expensive. How old are you? I've said this before. Do you think a white and a black would fuse to a mixed race? Yes, it's called Puerto Rican. Look it up. Sorry, D, but the background looks tacky on here. Well, open up your own Q&A and then make your own background. Dr. Garrow versus Max Power Frieza Frieza Saga. Garrow wins, in my opinion. I actually have a video about that called, uh, I don't know if it's, by the time you see this, it should already be up. If not, it'll be up soon. How Stronger 19 and 20, which I did with Mike from Laughing Stock Media. I don't know if the video is up yet because it's finished, but I have to pick up a good time to put it up. It may or may not be up, but if it's not up by the time you hear this or watch this video, it'll be up shortly. Get a little sip here. Here's an interesting question. What if Toriyama completely stopped Dragon Ball after the Piccolo Jr. arc? In other words, no DBZ and he went on to do short gag mangas. How would this change his career, the legacy and popularity of Dragon Ball, and the impact or lack of in manga creators after him? Huh. That is a loaded question. And it's probably one for a whole video. Toriyama in Japan was already, by the time Dragon Ball the Radix stuff and Z and all that, by the time that got kicked off in the manga, Toriyama was already very well respected due to not just Dragon Ball, but also Dragon Quest, Dr. Slump, and all the other stuff that he had done. So he was already a legend. But Z created a whole new, I guess, aura, I guess, lore when it comes to Dragon Ball. Because of the fact that you had characters performing crazy transformations, hair color changing, forms changing, crazy fights that I think helped make the Dragon Ball franchise very, very popular abroad. So that's a tough question. Would Dragon Ball be as popular if not for Z? I'm going to say honestly based on just me being on YouTube for like five months or four months or whatever, I'm going to say probably not. I think Dragon Ball would still be popular. I think Dragon Ball would still be successful. I don't think it would be as successful if it wasn't for Dragon Ball Z. Internationally, I don't think it would be. Um, and the thing is that Dragon Ball as a TV series can be seen in its own merits. It can be seen as, you know, because it is a great series even without Z. But, and you could even make an argument it's better than Z. Some people have said that. But there's things and aspects and tropes about DBZ that have become so huge that aren't even in Dragon Ball that it's kind of hard to argue. But as far as the impact of manga creators after him, he was already influential, but I, I guess Z just added to that kind of legacy. You know what I mean? That's the best kind of way I can answer that. Is Superman similar to Super 17? 
because they both can absorb energy to get stronger. So what I think is that the same thing is why Super 17 beat Goku. He absorbed energy and Superman did the same. In the end, what are your thoughts? Was this helpful? I don't know if they're the same just because they can absorb energy. But I mean, remember, 19 and 20 absorb energy too. And Goku whooped 19's ass before he had the heart attack. He would have won, arguably, if he didn't have the heart attack. Vegeta whooped his ass. So I. But the thing is that if those guys can kick Goku's ass at SSJ1... Superman can definitely kick their ass. Now, of course, Super 17 is more powerful, but I still think that Superman would kick Super 17's ass. Uh, I guess they're similar in that aspect, but that's about where the similarities end, right? What if Goku unlocked legendary SSG instead of SSG? Would he be stronger? No. No, he wouldn't. I mean, dude, Broly lost three times, bro. Come on now. Maybe, all right, this is from Ivan or Ivan Chaozu. Maybe since Universe 6 is an alternate universe and a lot of stuff would be different, like maybe Goku never became Goku and his Kakar Kakarat, <laughs> and he achieved SSGJ, I don't know what SSGJ is, maybe, maybe you mean God form, and Goku has to fight him, and since he's an SSGJ, he would most likely overthrow Frieza and become evil universal tyrant. Hmm. I mean, the evil Goku stuff, I already did a video about what kind of villain do you want to see in Super, so that one should answer your question. I did two videos about it, actually. Maybe. Do you think Bulma gives good head? Yes. Do you think we can calculate the power of Super Saiyan God by adding the power of six Saiyans together? If this is the case, then could six weak Saiyans make a weak Super Saiyan God? No. No. There is a difference between donating your key to somebody and then you add the power that way with, you know, if you can calculate their power, which is still pretty impossible at that point in the series. I mean, you don't know what their base forms are. You can assume that Vegeta and Goku's bases are way stronger by the time Battle of Gods happens. And then even if you add it up, because there's no way, like, there's just no way. If you add up all six of their powers, including Pan, who probably has no real power, and then you put them all together, it still wouldn't be enough to be Beerus. There's just no way. There's just no way. The SSJ God Ritual, the Super Saiyan God Ritual, ritual, excuse me, unlocks that, you know, secret power. And there's really no actual explanation. It's just something that I guess that their race is able to do. I don't know why or where the ability came from, but I guess they're able to do it. So, but it doesn't matter how strong they are, how strong they are. It's just a matter of doing the ritual properly. You know, that's... It's almost like a miracle. That's probably why it's called Super Saiyajin Goddo, because it's a miracle. It's not really something that makes any sense. And like Goku said, you really can't train for it. Can you do a video or series on Dragon Ball Z movies talking about when they were released, the plot, as well as fun facts? That's eh, coming. That's a little still thing I got working on here for the future, trust me. I really hate these questions. Super Super Slim Shady 3 Eminem versus Super Sage we Goku. I hate these questions. I'm not going to answer them, yo. Rap God Eminem. I said I would answer every question, but if these don't even make any sense. So, I mean, come on. Who's your favorite fan? Me, I guess. I don't really know. Will you ever meet Super Jan in person? Yes. Do you have Quiz Up? No, I do not. Uh, I think there's, like, there's a Dragon Ball community there. Maybe I'll check it out. You know what? If, you're, if you have Quiz Up, put my channel on there and see if we can get some more subs. Help me out. Why didn't Goku and Vegeta use the third wish to bring Gohan to fight Kid Buu? That's a great question. I've wondered that myself a few times. I don't know. Because they sure as hell could have had Gohan. They could have teleported all the Z fighters to Kai's planet to fight Buu. But I guess they already had the Genkidama made. So it was like, fuck it. This is all or nothing right now. Plus, maybe they knew that the effect of the Genkidama having all that Genki, that positive energy, you know would have been enough to take out Kid Buu because of how Kid Buu is pure evil. So, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, but, theoretically speaking, yes, Mystic slash Ultimate Gohan would have kicked Kid Buu's ass too. Especially if it's all three of them. I mean, you know, Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta against Kid Buu, I don't think Kid Buu stood a chance. You're right, I don't know why, because they're dumb. Hey, Geekdom, I was wondering, since Mystic Gohan is the strongest fighter in DB Super at this point, if I'm not correct, do you think he can have any more relevance this time? I think they are going to give him something to do in this uh, in Super. I think they will. What? I don't know, but I think they will. Jimmy Gutierrez, PyCon versus Dabura. Keep in mind, SSJ2 Gohan couldn't beat Dabura. SSJ Goku was pretty much on par with PyCon. Based upon feats that we see in the series, based upon the fact that Dabura, Dabura, 
is equal to Cell and PyCon, PyKuhan kicked Cell's ass, PyKuhan wins. I mean, I don't like that, but that's what happens. What do you think of the anime manga of your King of Lightning? Never heard of him. Chirp Chirp says, wipe your ass. I never do that. Is Mr. Satan black? Does that make Pan the first black Saiyan? Um, the black Goku would probably be the first black Saiyan. Look that up if you want. But uh, he's not black. I think he's like Greek or something. He looks like a Greek Italian, like a dark Italian. But remember, Italy doesn't exist in the Dragon Ball universe. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Plus, she's also half whatever the fuck white like what is goku and gohan like i don't even know this is races are very weird dragon ball you can't just say black white puerto rican chinese you can't just there's no such thing you know what i mean russian even though they have accents in the dubs and shit um so it's hard to really determine race i don't think she's black though she's that if anything she's mixed would you like it if Rags came to Earth and teamed up with Goku and Vegeta and he went Super Saiyan or even Super Saiyan God? I wouldn't care. These, these kind of fan fictions about Radix and Bardock coming back, it's almost like fanboy shit. I don't really, it's not really my thing. But if you want to see it, then hey, that's that's cool, bro. That's no problem there. All right, we got it. This is going to be the last set of questions right here. Two, one. It is funny, I feel as if another parallel between George Lucas and Akira Toriyama is that both wanted to include characters that were not essential to the plot and if nothing else were annoying. In Lucas's case, it was Jar Jar Binks, and in Toriyama's case, it was Hercule. Um, well, before I keep going with that, um, Mr. Satan, Hercule, whatever you want to call him, he is Toriyama's favorite character mostly because of how he drew him, even though I have heard that Jar Jar is Lucas's favorite character. <laughs> Uh, Jar Jar is actually important in a weird way because he does lead the Jedi to the Gungans. So, I mean, that is helpful. And then, of course, Hercule slash Mr. Satan helped a number of different ways, including by throwing 16's head over to where Cell and Gohan were, as well as helping the humans donate energy for the Genki Dama to kill Boo. So he is helpful. Uh, in fact, you could make an argument he actually helped save the world or actually saved the world. Two, both characters get on my and much of the fandom's nerves. Well, they're supposed to. Yeah, both Lucas and Toriyama don't seem to care. They can be sometimes so similar that it makes me sick. At least Lucas has the excuse of being corrupted as a businessman, but Toriyama has no excuse. I wish Toriyama would listen to his fans. Well, I don't know what you mean by Lucas has the excuse to be corrupted as a businessman because Toriyama can be corrupted as a businessman too. They're really not that different, except the only real difference as far as like how they treat their products is that Lucas is much, much more hands-on. Obviously, Lucas directs a lot of his stuff. He's uh, there all the time. Not so much now, but definitely during the prequel era and the special edition era. He was there. Toriyama doesn't really care that much. He just sends Toei shit, and they kind of do it. Um, I think the problem with both of these guys is not so much them. It's more so the fact that they're older and they're surrounded by people who grew up fans of theirs. Because they've created two extremely iconic universes and iconic brands, um, I think that people grew up with these brands and are now working with for Toei, working for Lucasfilm, working for Industrial Light and Magic, working for, for Shueisha, Namco Bandai, all these companies that are in charge of the franchises. As a result of that, you know... They have this respect for these guys, and there's also this fear of getting fired, too. So it's almost like they're not even willing to have the balls to stand up to them and say, okay, this sucks, because it is their vision. I don't know that to be the case exactly, but I've gotten that vibe from several of several interviews, both in the material for the previous movies in Dragon Ball Z, as well as the... Um, some of the documentaries behind the scenes of the prequel trilogy. It just seems like these guys have this aura about them because they created these great things that they can make no mistake, whereas us, the fan base, can criticize them on their mistakes, not because we want to insult them, but because we care about the product just as much as they do. We thank them. I know that we do as fans. We all have to thank Toriyama and Lucas for creating such great stuff, and it's it, very very impactful to our lives, especially mine, because I love Star Wars and I love Dragon Ball, but they're not perfect. They're people just like you and I, and they can make mistakes and plot holes and all that shit. And I think that sometimes if you work there, you're afraid to get fired, and thus you kiss their ass. Um, Jar Jar was at least de-emphasized in the later prequels, whereas Mr. Satan was actually emphasized. But understand that Mr. Satan is an infuriating character, but he's supposed to be. And at the end of the day, he did save the world no matter what. And that's going to do it 
for this edition of Geekdom Q&A. Bonus edition, thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch your ass down the road.